Hey there, everybody. The day has finally arrived. Chat GPT-4 is out and that's it. It's a robot that will take over the world. Prepare yourselves. Okay, no, seriously. Let's take a look at what is new in Chat GPT-4. And as you'll see, some things are really cool and others are a bit underwhelming in the sense that the rumors were not true. But still, this is very, very interesting. So let's see. First of all, the speculation that ChatGPT4 would be a multimodal model turned out to be true, except that the other type of input that is available beyond text is image. And uh, that's all. There is no video yet. There is no sounds. At least that's not released to the public yet. And they are not talking about it at all. But we will see what image can do right afterwards. So let's keep going. Generally, chat GPT-4 will be much smarter. So chat GPT-4 exhibits human level performance on various professional and academic benchmarks. For example, it passes a simulated bar exam with a score around the top 10% of test takers. But in contrast, chat GPT 3.5 score, the one that we have all been using, was around the bottom 10%. So the improvement here is dramatic. As they say in the article, it resulted in their best ever results on factuality, steerability, and refusing to go outside of guardrails. So we will get back to this. So this graph here shows the results that the various chat GPT versions had on different exams, as you can see here, right? This is a list of exams. And in blue here, well, you can see how well chat GPT 3.5 performed. And in green, you can see how chat GPT 4 did. And it's definitely an improvement on all of these tests here, which will definitely make a big difference. Again, it means that it's generally smarter. There is more data here. You can open up more tests. And this part is also very interesting. So here they show that chat GPT-4 is also an improvement in terms of other languages than English. And even uh, those languages which have very few resources to learn from, such as Latvian, for example, also saw dramatic improvements in terms of output quality. And finally, the big, big change is this, visual inputs. So basically, now you can upload an image into chat GPT-4. As they say here, GPT-4 can accept a prompt of text and images, right? And so you can specify any vision or a language task. But the output will be text, all right? Natural language code, etc. So you can input images, but you will receive text in return. ChatGPT4 cannot generate images or videos. That were the rumors, and this is not possible yet. However, when you go back up and you read this, with spent six months iteratively aligning GPT-4, and then over the past two years, we rebuilt our entire deep learning stack, etc., etc. Once again, it just confirms that they do have much better models at their disposal. And what we're seeing right now is far from the capabilities that uh, these systems already have. And this is what I explained in my previous video, which you should definitely watch because the implications of this are actually crazy. But anyway, let's get back to chat GPT-4 that we, the people, do have access to. So here we have examples of what ChatGPT4 can do with a visual input. For example, let's say that you upload an image like this and you can ask, what is funny about this image? Describe it panel by panel. And then ChatGPT goes, what it shows, right? Panel one, panel two, panel three. And then it explains, so the humor in this image comes from the absurdity of plugging a large, outdated VGA connector into a small, modern smartphone charging port. So it understood perfectly what is shown in this image and also what is weird, what is strange, what is funny, what is unusual about this image. But you can see more samples here. For example, you can upload the graph like this and ask a question. What is the sum of average daily meat consumption for Georgia and Western Asia? Provide a step-by-step -step reasoning before providing your answer. And so here is the reasoning of chat GPT-4. So it analyzes this image, extracts the data from this image, both text and visual data, and then gives you an answer. So everything that you were able to do with text previously, like upload the text, summarize the text, or anything like that, now you will be able to do the same with images. So as with all these innovations, we can't even imagine yet the possibilities that will come out of this. 
Here, for example, actually, this is an interesting example because this is an image of a text in French, right? Something quite complex scientifically. And it understands it anyway and then can explain you what it is, which is pretty crazy. Here again, it analyzes the image and what is unusual about this image? Well, it's the fact that a man is ironing clothes on an ironing board attached to the roof of a moving taxi. And yeah, it gets the sense of that image. Here, for example, it's a meme and it understands the meme, right? It understands what the meme is about. And even more crazy, actually, it can understand this comic. That is pretty insane. So these are the few examples that you can already look for yourself, but let's keep going. Steerability here, this is a bit more specific. So this is for those who will use APIs, right? ChatGPT API, basically build applications on top of ChatGPT. They will have more control over the whole system. So here's an example. Imagine you're a developer and you're creating some kind of application based on ChatGPT and you want it to answer this way. So you say you are a tutor that always responds in the Socratic style. <laughs> You never give the student the answer, but always try to ask just the right question to help them learn to think for themselves. You should always tune your question to the interest and knowledge of the student, breaking down the problem into smaller parts until it's at just the right level for them, right? So then the user asks a question, how do I solve the system of linear equations? And that's what ChatGPT answers. Let's start by analyzing the equations. Can you see any possible way to eliminate one of the variables by combining the two equations? So this approach is very interesting, of course, because, for example, for learning, uh, this can be very helpful as you don't give a straightforward answer to the student, but you make them think. And this is the best way to learn when you find the answer yourself, because you arrived at that conclusion using your own uh, thinking, your own brain. The learning here is much more solid and it keeps going like this. You can see more examples. So you are a pirate, etc., etc. And yeah, some of those things chat GPT 3.5 could already do, but 4 just does it better and allows for more control in terms of API for those who will build applications on top of chat GPT. Then of course we have the limitations. As usual, chat GPT can hallucinate, all right, and output very, very strange responses, but generally it scores uh, much higher than chat GPT 3.5 in terms of accuracy. So here, OpenAI, they have their own way to evaluate facts that GPT answers. So internal factual evaluation by category. And uh, here you can see that chat GPT-3 is in this color here in the middle and chat GPT-4 is in green. And so learning, technology, writing, history, math, science, recommendation, code, business, Everything is better with GPT-4. It's much more accurate. It's much more factual. It makes dramatically fewer mistakes. However, what is quite surprising, though, is that GPT-4 generally lacks knowledge of events that have occurred after the vast majority of its data cuts off. September 2021. So here, basically, it's exactly the same as GPT-3.5, and it does not learn from its experience. So this is a bit strange. So I was expecting GPT-4 to be updated to 2022, or basically uh, somewhat in real time, right? But no, it's still limited to 2021, but it's much better in terms of what it knows up until that date. Then, of course, the risks. Uh, GPT-4 is much safer, probably duller, because you will have much more trouble to jailbreak it. And so it will be much more controlled for political correctness and not to hurt anyone's feelings and stuff like this. So for OpenAI as a company, this is a good thing. For users, it will probably take out some fun, but I guess it's necessary maybe in today's world, unfortunately, to not let people abuse it. And finally, how will you be able to access it? Because here there's also a change. So ChatGPT Plus subscribers will get GPT-4 access on the same link. Well, I guess uh, you will not be able to access it if you're not a paid monthly subscriber. And there will be a usage cap. The thing is that these systems, they cost a lot to work. So they need to finance this. So not only will you have to pay uh, the GPT Plus subscription to access GPT-4, but you will also have a usage cap. And they say that we will adjust the exact usage cap depending on demand and system performance in practice. But we expect 
to be severely capacity constrained. And of course, depending on the traffic patterns we see, we may introduce a new subscription level for higher volume GPT-4 usage. And yep, this is definitely coming. I don't see how this can remain at $20 per month. It will definitely go up. They have absolutely no reason charging such a little amount, given the demand that there is for this tool. Uh, and yeah, they do say here, so we also hope at some point to offer some amount of free GPT-4 queries so those without a subscription can try it too. So maybe there will be like a test version if you're not paying, but that's it. So now we're getting into real business, basically. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what you think about all this stuff, which is really crazy how fast everything goes and how impressive these tools are. We're living during some really, really cool times.